Hey everybody, this is Dean, and welcome to Dino's Tech World. Today I thought I'd show you how to use Mural, which is an online whiteboard application that you can use for online presentations or to collaborate online. First thing we're going to do is click on Create Mural, and it gives us this window which has a bunch of templates on it. The templates are by category right here, so if you wanted to do some brainstorming, you can click on Brainstorm. It will give you all the uh, templates that are related to brainstorming. You can also search all of the templates. For, ex for example, you can type Kanban, and we get all the Kanban templates. Uh, but today what we're going to do is we're going to just start with a blank mural here uh, so that we can start show you what the interface uh, looks like and how it works. All right, along the side, we have uh, kind of the main uh, icons here. Now, what Mural is, is it actually is a uh, canvas that's much bigger than the screen. Uh, so if you look down here in the bottom right corner, this is what's called the mini-map. This orange area right here is the area of the canvas we're currently on. We can click on this Move icon here. And uh, the move icon allows us to move around the whiteboard without um, messing with any objects that we have on, on it. Right now we don't have anything on it, so it's not that big of a deal. But as we move around, you can see this orange uh, square here moving as we're moving on the canvas. And if we go back up to the edge, you can see the edge here. Let's just put it at the corner to start with. And you'll see as we move along, more things on here as we put objects down. So the next thing that we can do, uh, we need to click off of the uh, the move mode so that we can go back to the regular icons. We can go to text here and we have a bunch of different choices. We can put a title down which is, is just meant to do titles. We can do a text box which is meant to do um, more text than just a title. So you can write paragraphs with this. And then there's a comment section. And uh, that actually will put like a little number here. And you can enter your comment on the side so people can click on that comment and see what it is. So we're going to get rid of those th three things right now. And uh, we also have sticky notes, which are different colors. Now most of the things you can pull and drag on some of the things you can actually click, like these um, post-it notes, and it will throw them somewhere up on the middle of the uh, area that you're looking at. Uh, but it's usually easier just to click and drag them. The other thing is if you highlight them, you can hit the delete key to get rid of them, or you can right-click on them to click delete and get rid of them. Uh, Finally, also, if we put a piece of text up here, you can see that we have other things like we can change the size of the text. We can also change the background color of the text. By default, it's actually clear. We can change it to white if we want to. And uh, so whenever you click on an object, it will bring up a little menu here of things that you can do to it. The next thing that we have down here is shapes and connectors. Now, Mural will do a lot of the basic functions that PowerPoint, flowcharting software, and drawing software will do. In this particular segment, it, it does uh, flowcharting. This is for flowcharting, basically. So we can put an object down here, and, and you can see we can put a name right in there, or, or we can just call this uh, circle. We can label whatever we want, and we can also put like a square here and put box is the label if we want. And we can drag these connectors over so we can connect one to the other. Uh, the other way we can do this is we can turn this on right here which will allow us to put a shape here and put these connector things right here, these little connector handles. And uh, we can kind of automatically change it. So that's a lot faster if you're doing a lot of flow charting. Uh, but typically, uh, you probably want to keep that off because it will put these handles on all sorts of objects, which can cause some problems. 
so we're going to move over to a new segment of the canvas right here, which is the way this basically works. And uh, we can also move back. And if you look here in the mini map, you can see the square moving and you can see the little objects that are currently available on it. The next icon over here is actually the icon of icons. So we can pick icons to notate things. For instance, if we really like this box, we might put a heart next to it. We can go up to this little uh, raindrop uh, icon right here and change the color of the icon. So we can change that to red if we want to. Uh, we can also uh, go here and put maybe a question mark by something if we have a question about it. Or we can go down here and uh, we can select this dollar sign indicating this might be a costly thing or that we have a question about the cost and we can change the color of that to green if we want. So these icons kind of can be used to bring attention to something, to mark something, or just to make something look a little bit better to decorate it. However you want to use them, you can use them. The next segment is frameworks. We're going to move over here a little bit. And so we have different frameworks we can use. We can use as a grid, for example. Now the grid, uh, at the top of it is a title. So the only thing you can change on these frameworks is the title. Uh, so we're going to just put New City Grid up here as the title. We're going to move this down a little bit and move our canvas back around. Now we can zoom in and out of the canvas by using the scroll um, button on our mouse. And so now we can go back over here. We're going to go to icons real quick. And we're going to put icons in these different squares here. And we're going to change the color of this to green. And we're going to go here and put this heart here. And change the color of that to red. And we're going to put a little lock right here. And then we're going to put a light bulb right here. So the interesting thing about these frameworks is once we put these things inside of the framework, if we click on the framework, we can move it around and you can see the icons that I just put in there stay where they were. So that's very useful. Now, if we move over here again and go back to uh, frameworks, you can see that there are categories here. And so if we go to design right here, if, if we go to this and pull this roadmap out, we can change the name roadmap. But these headings and titles on the side and across the top are an image. We can't edit those like regular text. So the way around that is to actually go up to text here and use a title or a text box but you have to remember to change the background to white instead of transparent, which is, is uh, by default. And then you can actually cover up the different titles with your own titles that way. So that's kind of the workaround on that. So let's get rid of that for now. And we're going to drag this back over here. Now remember, you can always put this hand on to put it into move mode so you can't inadvertently edit stuff that's going on in here. You can also move without that. But if you click on something, you might actually move it around. So that's kind of just to make things uh, a little bit easier. Also, the other thing is, is if you click on an object here, you can right click on it and go to lock to lock it into position so other people can't inadvertently move it. So if there's something you want to stay in a particular position, you can lock it down as well. Now, the next segment that we're going to go to is the images segment and we can import images here from our local hard drive or from Google Drive, Dropbox or OneDrive uh, or what we can do is we can actually search uh, they have some images available here 
And uh, so if we go on here and type the word ocean, for example, it will give us all these pictures of oceans. So we can move this over here and we can put a picture of the ocean like this. We can also resize this, this picture. Uh, and we could put it inside this grid if we wanted to. So for example, let's right click on this and delete this image. And we're going to reduce this. And put it right into that box like that. And once again, we can move this around now. So this becomes part of this framework. And so this is like a separate work area that we can move around. So that's that's a very nice feature. So now the next thing is our content library. And our content library are, uh, if we take a framework and kind of create our own framework and put different objects in it, and we want to save that for some reason, we can do that in here. For example, I have this SWAT grid right here. And I made this previously, so I can drop this down and I can put multiple copies down very quickly. So if I have different teams working on their own kind of SWAT chart, we can do that and they can we can give them separate areas of the mural for that. Um, now the other thing of course is we can save one. So let's take our new city grid and save our new city grid. So if we highlight that and we right click on it, go here and we can go save to content library and we can name it and we're going to call it new city grid and we're going to go save and it will save it up to the top here so if we click on that it will drop one right out on here or we can click and drag it if we want to some objects you can click on and it will pop out onto the mural and other ones you have to you have to uh, click on and drag so it's probably easier most of the times just to click and drag them because then they'll go exactly where you want them to. The next area we have here is you can import files so we can actually import like a PDF or a Word file and import it onto the mural if you want to do that. And finally there's a draw uh, function here so you can pick the uh, size of the pen that you're using you can use a highlighter you can use an eraser so let's pick a medium point. We can go here and we can change the color to whatever we want, red in this case. And so you can just draw on the uh, mural and you can like underline things or circle things if you want. You can actually log on here using an iPad app with your iPad and use the pen on your iPad as well to make it easier to draw. It's kind of hard to draw with a mouse. Or you could use a tablet uh, connected to your PC if you do this a lot to make it easier to, to draw and make comments on the uh, whiteboard. So those are the main features of, of how to uh, draw and create on the whiteboard uh, there are other functions up here. For example, we have a timer. You can click this timer on. The timer is a nice function because if you select the timer and start the timer, it will give a countdown. Uh, so if you're having groups work on something and you say, well, we're going to give you five minutes to do it, this timer will let them know uh, how much time they have. And it just times up there and it will go times up when it's over. You can also create an outline, and what the outline does is we can add, we can right click on an object and add it to the outline. So uh, let's add this to the outline right there. And by default, it's giving the title of this particular framework. You can do the same over here, add to outline gives the framework you can change the title to whatever you want so the nice thing about this is if we're over here if we have this outline we can click on this or or anyone can click on the outline it will take them right to the particular segment the other way to go somewhere if there are multiple people working you can actually um, 
click on their icon and go to where they are. You can also ask to be followed so that people will follow you around the uh, whiteboard as you move around if they're in another section of it. The other thing to uh, draw your attention to is this right up here where it says activity. So this is all the stuff that we were doing in the whiteboard right down here. And you can actually go on here and look through here to go back to see what was, has been done. But if people have been working on this board independently, like people have been coming on and off during the week, you can actually see what has been done and what has been changed by going to the activity uh, section right there. Finally, there's the share icon. If we click the share icon, we can invite people using their email address or we can use this invite link. And so we can copy the link and email it to them if we want to so they know where the uh, the mural board is that we're collaborating on. Okay, that's a quick overview of how to use mural. I'm Dean and this has been Dino's Tech World and I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.